Hi everyone, and welcome to another video. Today I want to orchestrate a melody and accompaniment texture for woodwinds. And I'll also be showing a process for creating accompanimental sketches when starting with just a melody. Before I start, I just want to say that there are so many methods for composing, and more specifically for generating ideas. Some composers may wait for an original idea to come to them, while some need an instrument to play and come up with something and many others can work directly in software and come up with really great stuff. There's no correct way to compose, but I do think that there's a method that can best work for you personally, and it may take a while, even years before you discover your process. For me, I like to generate ideas through improvisation or even just through working something out in my head, like this melody, for instance. The idea came to me in my head, and I eventually sat down with a sample instrument to play it into the DAW. I'll record it in without a metronome. I'm using an alto flute solo from Orchestral Tools. The next step in my process is to transcribe what I just played in. I personally orchestrate either with paper and pencil or in a notation program like Dorico, so this is a necessary step in my process, but maybe not necessary in yours. One of the tricky things is being able to adjust what I play in to fit a more standard notation without losing some of the rhythmic nuance. That often means factoring in the rubato plane or irregular meters, or complex rhythms. But I always do this transcription process by ear, as opposed to letting the DAW or notation software do it. Here's how I transcribed this melody. I've added a tempo marking, although I'll keep in mind that the end result may need to have some fluctuations in tempo to make it more musical. I've also added slurs to indicate legato playing. So now I want to go from this alto flute melody to a much larger woodwind texture. As always, there are endless possibilities here, but in this video, I want to try and extract as much information from the melody as possible, and I'll let that information inform things like harmony and texture. So what exactly do I mean by extracting information from the melody? Well, let me break that down into a few different musical elements. I'll start with harmony. When I heard this melody in my head, I wasn't thinking about chords at the time, and that can be really liberating. Now that the melody is written down, how should I go about determining harmonies? A while back, I made a video on implied harmony, and that concept can definitely apply here. And it helps to start by looking at the form. A few things to look for, any natural phrases that end with a longer note or a rest, so perhaps right here. That seems to be the only obvious phrase break in this melody. Also look at melodic contour. Is there any obvious registral shape? Here we have a high note towards the end that suggests maybe a climactic moment. There's an overall ascending trajectory to the melody that's really easy to see in the MIDI view here. It ascends to that A-flat, then falls back down to end the phrase. So I suppose, in terms of melodic phrasing, you could organize this into three phrases. A first phrase that establishes the melodic idea, A second phrase that builds on fragments of that idea while ascending towards a climax. And a final phrase that includes the climactic note and then the final descending motion and cadence.
You could certainly organize this differently from what I've done here, but this way shows a clear beginning, middle, and end, which is easy enough to work with, I think. I may want to let the melodic form influence my harmonic choices. For the first phrase, I'll keep the harmony somewhat stable, meaning not a lot of harmonic changes, and overall fairly simple. Then, because a lot of the melodic fragmentation and development occurs in the second phrase, I'll let the harmonies build in complexity with more instability and harmonic motion. Finally, the harmonies will reach a climactic moment with resolution and a return to stability. So if I look at the implied harmony of the first phrase, I see that there's a C, an F, a D flat, a G in the first two measures with a B flat at the end of measure two and an A natural appearing near the end of measure three. So the complete collection of pitches in the first phrase is C, F, D flat, G, B flat, and A. I'll talk more about what to do with that information in just a bit. In the second phrase, I start with mostly the same pitches plus E flat. That takes us all the way to the end of measure six, at which point there's a clear harmonic shift with G flat instead of G natural. So perhaps this is a good place to have a more noticeable harmonic change. This leads directly into the climactic A flat, which seems almost like a continuation of the previous harmonic collection, but also a transition to the end, which again is like a return to the beginning material. Overall, I'd say the pitch content and potential implied harmonies follow along quite nicely with the melodic phrases. So I have a good sense of the overall form of this melody. Now I'll take all of that information and start to play around with different instruments. It sounds nice with just alto flute, but if I'm going to start adding accompanimental textures, I may need to add more instruments playing either in unison or at the octave on this melody. I'll keep the first phrase to an alto flute because I like that timbre, especially in this register. Then in the second phrase, I'll bring in concert flutes one at a time, at first in unison with alto flute, then perhaps up the octave towards the climactic moment, at which point I can bring in piccolo as well and move the alto flute down the octave. Finally, in the last measure, I'll get rid of piccolo as the line is descending back down and getting softer. Basically, I'm taking the overall shape or contour of the melody and exaggerating that contour through adding more instruments and expanding octaves. I'm keeping this melody just in flutes. I could certainly see any wind instrument potentially working here on this melody though. Now to look at the accompaniment, I'll start with the first phrase. Instead of thinking about chords, I'll use that pitch content information that I gathered from before and sketch out a simple accompaniment. I do this in several stages. First, I like to get an idea of where the accompanimental pitches would be located on a staff. I normally do this with paper and pencil, so here I'll just show it on piano staff. This shows a rough positioning of where the accompaniment notes may occur, and I'm pulling notes directly from the melody. In fact, I'm having the accompaniment sort of follow along in a similar contour to the melody and I add new harmony notes as the alto flute plays them for the first time. And I always have to keep in mind that the alto flute is a quiet instrument, so this accompaniment has to be thin. I'm thinking maybe just clarinets in this first phrase. Now with that in place, I can decide on how exactly the clarinets will play these notes. How much emotion do I want? Do I want crescendos or swells? Long notes, short notes? Well, you might just want to try a few different things and see what you like. Here are a few versions that I've tried. First, I tried one with very little motion and mostly sustaining articulations. Because I need to keep this thin, I'm only using two clarinets, so I have to be creative in order to cover all of these notes from that accompaniment sketch. If I added more clarinets or some other wind instrument like flutes or bassoons, again, I run the risk of masking that alto flute line, which is ultimately the most important part of this texture. At the arrival downbeat in the fourth measure, I really want all of those notes to be heard simultaneously, so finally I'll bring in bass clarinet and a flute. So in the next version, I tried the same four measures and in instrumentation, but with trills now in the clarinets. Whether it's unmeasured or measured trills or just simple back and forth pulsating notes, you can really create a sense of motion and incorporate more of the harmony notes without adding more instruments. So for instance, in beat four here, I only have two clarinets on the backgrounds, but because they are both trilling notes, I can cover all four notes in the accompaniment that I wanted. 
because I still want to maintain that sense that we're building, I'll bring in a few more instruments towards the end of the phrase, bass clarinet and low flutes. And I decided to bump the bass clarinet D flat down the octave to expand the range just a bit. Here's another version. This time I'm using short articulations to create motion. However, the more motion I add, like with the 16th note staccatos, the more likely the background might cover up the relatively weak dynamics of the alto flute. So that leads me to partially move the 16th notes over to the start of the next measure, while the alto flute has a sustaining note. I also decided to support the melody a bit with bass clarinet and second flute right here. And here are a few more contrasting versions of this first phrase, where I focused on shorter duration notes in the accompaniment. For the sake of time, I won't discuss the details, but I'll play through them. You'll notice that I expanded the instrumentation to include a lot more low woodwinds, but also notice that they're not always plain, so that leaves space for the melody. So I'm going to go back now to version 3 and continue orchestrating onto the next phrase. As I did before, I'll use the melodic pitch content to compose a sketch of the accompaniment. And I won't bother getting exact rhythms down, nor do I need to figure out all of the details initially. This sketch here merely shows me approximate positions of accompanying notes in relation to the melody, and like before, I'm using the contour of the melody to influence the contour of the accompaniment. In this second phrase, the contour of the triplet rhythms in the melody go down and up and back down and so on, and that caught my eye, so I've done something similar in the accompaniment, using the same basic collection of notes, just organized into chords. I'm not even really concerned about labeling these chords, I'm more thinking about the intervals that they form, and of course the voice leading from chord to chord. So continuing where I left off with version 3, I've orchestrated these measures using the configuration of flutes on the melody that I came up with a bit earlier. Because I'm adding instruments on this melody and expanding the range through the octave doubles, I can start to bring in a few more instruments on the accompaniment. I want to create cohesion from the first phrase, so I'll continue the short staccatos that were present in clarinets from before, by using pitches from my sketch, including a bit of the contour from that sketch as well. I'm also introducing oboes on pulsating quarter notes that play the top two notes from those sketch chords. And below the clarinets and oboes, I have bass clarinet sustains, and I'm introducing the bassoons as well, expanding the low register just as I expanded the upper register with flutes. The last two beats here signal a shift towards the climactic moment, and I've moved to more of a homophonic texture without staccatos or repetitions. That's a choice I made for this orchestration, but I could easily see a version where you stick with short duration notes and staccatos through the end of the piece. Here's what this sounds like from the beginning up until the climactic moment. Onto the last few measures, 
continuing the more homophonic texture leading up to the climax, I'll also continue expanding the register outward to take advantage of a richer chord with bassoons and bass clarinet. In the second to last measure here, I think this is the first time that I'm actually incorporating notes in the harmony that weren't already present in the melody above. But if you recall, both the E flat and A natural belonged to the phrase one collection, so it makes sense to me that they would be present here as well. After all, this phrase is resolving the conflict from phrase two, so I'm moving away from phrase two and back towards the phrase one harmonies. Here's how I ended up orchestrating this ending. I closely followed the sketch harmony and registers but changed the rhythms just a bit. I wanted this climactic arrival in the upper register to stand out, and I decided one way to do that would be to have the bass register notes wait an eighth note to enter. This also helps break up the regularity of chord pacing, so even when I sketched out a homophonic texture, I can offset entrances and rhythms to hint more at polyphony. I think the only note change I made in the orchestration was to add in the low F on beat three of the final chord, this helps to give the moment more resolution. Let's hear how it sounds from the beginning. So even though I'm using just one orchestral family of instruments, I can create really interesting textures with several layers present. And in woodwinds especially, you have so many colors to choose from. As always, I could probably take this short melody and make dozens of contrasting versions, but I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is. I did, however, upload an additional contrasting sketch with the same melody, but slightly different harmonies to my Patreon page. I originally intended on orchestrating it, but I just ran out of time. Any of my patrons, though, are welcome to try orchestrating it themselves if interested. You can find a link to that below where you can download all of the MIDI files, Music XML files, Dorico, Cubase Studio One files, and more. I'll most likely continue working with woodwinds and creating orchestral textures with winds in my next video, so stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.